Skeletons of the Marital Closet by Wen Tang Tang Chapter 1461 Heather was annoyed at the thought of it. She had never done this kind of work before. When she was young, she was fair-skinned, beautiful, and had long legs which Matthew lusted after. He swiped his card for her and bought her everything she wanted. She lived alone in a high-end apartment by the river with a housekeeper and a maid, living a carefree life. Now, she finally experienced what hardship meant. It's hard for you. Heather, it's my fault. Now, you're the only one by my side. You may complain a lot, but you haven't left me, and I'm already content, Matthew said. Heather remained silent. She was impatient, thinking that Matthew had long been displeased with her, but she never expected him to have such thoughts. Gail chuckled. How do you know she'll stay with you and not leave? Perhaps Heather has been scheming to get one last big score from you and then run away. Leaving would be the right thing. It would be in line with human nature. She and I were originally immoral, so we are condemned by others. In my current state, what is there for her to hold on to? Matthew replied. You've become very insightful. Matthew sighed. Having experienced the ups and downs of life, I'm not a young man anymore. In this world, there's not as much love and righteousness as people think. Everyone is after their own interest. I pursued Heather for her gentleness and care, and she pursued my power and wealth. Now that I am penniless, she's no longer gentle. This is human nature, and I see through it. So, I don't blame her. I just hate myself for not having had real power and the ability to do as I please and continue the life I wanted. Matthew shook his head repeatedly. As soon as I left your mother, I became nothing and lost everything. Everything I have was built on the foundation of her support. When she took it away, I lost everything. Gail asked, so do you regret it? If you had a chance to start over, would you still choose to be with Heather and Natalie? Matthew remained silent for a long time. He definitely regrets it. He definitely wouldn't choose me. He regrets it so much. And it's all because of Natalie that he's in this state. He would love to cling to you right now and experience a better life. Heather interjected. Matthew still did not speak. He expected Heather to behave this way, but what surprised him was that Heather had not left yet, so he decided to temporarily let it be. Let's not talk about this, Gail. I know you don't want to hear this. I've called you here today because there's something else I want to tell you. Matthew waved his hand. Gail stood by the hospital bed. Oh, go ahead. The doctor has scheduled the surgery for next week. After the heart stent is put in, if all goes well, I won't be in the hospital for long. It will go smoothly. I've told you, don't scare yourself. Matthew nodded. But if, for some reason, I don't make it through the surgery, I have two things to ask of you. Can you do them? Gail felt a difficult, indescribable emotion. She despised Matthew, but it would be hard to reject someone's dying wish. Before she could answer, Matthew continued, 1. Bury me next to the ancestral grave of the Yarn family. Don't bury me too far away. 2. Give Heather some money and help her leave Sea City to start a new life somewhere else. Chapter 1462 Gale I have only these two requests. I don't expect anything more. This shouldn't be difficult for you, right? Your hatred for me should gradually disappear with my death. Gail looked at him. Why do you have to be so pessimistic when your surgery isn't that dangerous? She asked. 
because life is full of surprises and no one knows what will happen in the next second. I need to take care of my affairs properly to avoid regrets and die without any worries. Matthew replied, If you insist on thinking that way, there's nothing I can do. Matthew sighed, Gail, I feel that I'm better off dead. I'm of no use anymore, only being despised by all of you. I would rather the surgery not go smoothly. That way, I can leave, resolve the grudge between you and your mother, and end everything here. If he really died, Gil would definitely fulfill the two tasks he had mentioned. If he survived, that would be more complicated, especially when it came to letting Heather go. Gail replied, I can promise you the first thing, but I can't give you an answer about the second thing yet. Why? Matthew was surprised, sitting up on the hospital bed, but due to his weakness, he collapsed back onto the bed. Heather hasn't committed an unforgivable mistake. Why won't you? <coughs> she is very likely the mastermind behind my disappearance many years ago. Until the matter is clarified, until her suspicion is cleared, I won't let her go. Gail answered. Matthew was surprised and looked at Heather. Did you get involved in this? I have no idea. She, she insists on blaming me. What can I do? Heather hastily replied. Heather panicked, and despite her efforts to remain calm, it was clear she was anxious. Even Matthew felt something was amiss. If you didn't do it, what would you be afraid of? With a clear conscience, you have nothing to fear, he asked. Right, right, I'm not afraid. Matthew furrowed his brow. You see that, right? Don't you think she has a guilty conscience? Gail did not need to explain further. Heather. Is there any connection between you and the incident where Gail went missing? Matthew asked. Heather denied it without hesitation. No? Matthew chose to believe her. If she said there was no connection, then there was not. Gail, I think there is a misunderstanding here. Heather is a bit spoiled and has a bad temper, but she's not a bad person, Matthew said. Gail found it amusing. A person who became a mistress had no ill intentions? Not when she did something to destroy someone else's marriage? She decided not to argue further. It was a waste of breath. You called me here just to explain these things? Is that all you wanted to say? Gail changed the subject. Matthew nodded. Then let me ask you, if your surgery is successful, how do you plan to live? I will leave with Heather, if she is willing to go with me, Matthew replied. And if she's not willing? Chapter 1463 Then I'll leave on my own. Let her be. Gail smiled as she looked at Heather and said, Look at Matthew, once a powerful man, now fallen from grace, but he still thinks of you at every turn. If he dies, he'll make sure to leave you a sum of money to guarantee your retirement. If he lives, he'll take you wherever he goes. He truly loves you. Although Matthew had seen through Heather's true nature and found out that she only cared about his power and wealth, he still took care of her in various ways. If this isn't true love, then what is it? If Matthew was not her father, if he had not betrayed his marriage, hurting Mary in the process, Gail might even have respected him. How rare it was. In this modern society, who would think so much for another person? Heather also did not expect Matthew to be so considerate of her. She had always treated Matthew as her cash cow and her protector. So when she was young, she used all kinds of means to capture his heart submissively stayed with him as her secret lover, gave birth to his daughter, and maintained a gentle and obedient front. She knew what Matthew liked, and she acted accordingly, pretending to dance to his tunes. It was not until now that Heather had shed her disguise 
and revealed her true self. Heather thought that by this point, she had reached the end of the road with Matthew. Once Matthew regained his power, or if the situation improved even slightly, he would unhesitatingly cast her aside. However, she had underestimated his feelings. Heather looked at Matthew and asked, Do you really love me that much? Why talk about love? As long as you're doing well, that's enough. He replied. Gail observed with a cold gaze. I really don't know what's so great about you that makes Matthew care about you so much. You're lucky in a way. So many people never find a truly loving partner in their lifetime, even when you're just his mistress. Heather hung her head low. If he truly loved me, he wouldn't have kept me as his mistress for over 20 years. That's because he didn't have the means. He had to rely on Mary's family for everything. He was planning to stand up for you to give you a proper status. Unfortunately, Natalie ruined it all and you won't get to experience your time in the light. Gail then turned to leave. All right. You two can stay here and deal with your own problems. Matthew tried to call her back. Gail, where are you going? Do I need to report my whereabouts to you? You're going to see your mother, right? I'm sure you did not come to the hospital just to see me, Matthew said. Gail did not look back at him. Yes, I'm going to have a chat with her. Although they were in the same hospital... Matthew and Mary's treatment experience was vastly different. Mary stayed in a high-end ward in an exclusive and cordoned area with caregivers and a head nurse providing meticulous care. Matthew was treated as an ordinary person, having to handle everything himself. Moreover, he and Heather could not enter Mary's ward or even set foot in the block. Seeing Mary would be an impossible as him entering the heavens. To Gail, she felt that they had simply returned to their original stations in life. Mary had always come from a prestigious background, and therefore, she had always deserved this treatment. Chapter 1464 Matthew, who has been enjoying a luxurious life for so many years, was suddenly brought back to reality. Matthew sighed. I also want to see her, and I want to apologize to her. After all, we have been married for so many years. I let her down. I haven't been a good husband. Just be a good lover to your new woman. My mom doesn't need your apology. She's better off without you. Yes, I hope she gets better. Actually, I don't have the courage to see her. She probably doesn't want to see me either. But... Matthew hesitated for a few seconds, but Gail had already walked out of the hospital room. Gail! Gail! I feel like your mom wants to see Natalie. She raised her as her own daughter, single-handedly. Can she bear never seeing her again in this lifetime? He shouted loudly. Gail pretended not to hear, continuing to walk forward. Matthew kept shouting from behind. She walked faster and faster until she could not hear him. Would Mary want to see Natalie? Maybe she did. She had hinted it at a few times. Gail did not understand and thought Mary was just casually mentioning it. Now that Matthew mentioned it, Gail started to connect the dots. Mary was expressing her longing indirectly. Even if one had a pet for many years, one would feel some sense of attachment. What more, a daughter? What would be the point of meeting now? Mary understood the need for justice and would not simply ask Gail to release her. At the hospital room's entrance, Heather peeked out half of her head and looked outside. They're really gone now. She quickly closed the door. Matthew, what did you mean? Do you want Natalie to meet that woman? Yes. Why? Can her plea save Natalie? Let's give it a try. There's no other way now, and desperate times call for desperate measures. 
Only she can intercede on behalf of Natalie. Aram can't even do that, Matthew said. Heather stomped her foot. It will make a difference. What's the use? It might make Natalie's life a little less miserable. She might live out of the rest of her life in peace. What's the point of living when she can't even be free? Matthew asked. Do you want her to die? I... well, never mind. You wouldn't understand. Heather was the type of person who either lived large or not at all. Mediocrity was not the life she wanted. In her heart, she assumed that Natalie had inherited her desires. She believed that her own flesh and blood would be the same. They both wanted to be exceptional, and they will do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. I understand you, Heather. After all these years, how could I not understand you? Unfortunately, I can't provide the dream life you want to you anymore. If you want to leave, you can go now, and I won't stop you, Matthew said. Well, where would she go? Heather has no money and no place to call home, so she might as well stay here. At least, Matthew could still be her protector. She also wanted to wait and see if there would be a breakthrough for Natalie. Although I'm shallow and love money, I'm not that heartless. Heather picked up a bag of medicine. I'll go prepare your medicine. You lie down and rest. Chapter 1465 Matthew looked at her and suddenly smiled. Heather, for as long as we've been with each other, we have always understood each other. Even though we're not exactly good people, we know each other better than anyone else. Matthew understood Heather's calculating nature, and Heather also understood Matthew's male chauvinistic nature. People like Mary, who come from privileged backgrounds, have never worried about money and always could uphold their principles. They did not understand the struggles of people like them who have climbed a social ladder from the bottom up and who would do anything for a little profit. As long as they could have a better life, they would do whatever it takes. Heather walked to the dispensary. Before she left, she said, Hang in there, Matthew. We've been together for so many years, and I still want to stay by your side. I might not be able to find someone new who can be as good to me as you. Besides, I'm not getting any younger. All right, I'll wait until my surgery and see how the situation with Natalie unfolds. Matthew had already decided. In the end, even if there was nothing left, even if his daughter was gone, he would do everything he could to protect Heather. Gail came to Mary's hospital room. She placed a fruit basket and a bouquet on the table. Mom, do you want an apple? I can peel it for you. No need. I just had a bowl of truffle soup. I'm full. What about you? Aren't you busy at work? Gail replied. We just launched our new jewelry line, so it's relatively quiet. Mom, are you worried my card won't work? She intentionally teased her to lighten the mood. Mary laughed. You are always joking. Mom, use it. I didn't give it to you to keep. All right. You're repeating what Sean told you, aren't you? Gail playfully blinked her eyes. Now, she understood how Sean felt. When you spend money on someone you love, you do it willingly. You will not be afraid of how much they spend. It's fear they would not spend at all. Mary held her hand. Sit down. I've been feeling much better these days. I don't feel as weak as before. Having a daughter by my side makes all the difference. That's why they say family is the best. I understand it now. I'll spend more time with you when I can, Mom. You have families and jobs. How are you going to make the time? Mary said. I'm just saying don't take it too seriously. To be honest, being able to see you from time to time is enough for me. Mom, you probably want to see your granddaughter too, right? Mary's eyes lit up. Of course, 
I want to. I haven't seen any pictures of Nicole. I can't find them online, and the few I found are blurred out, so I can't see her face clearly. Gail responded, I have them on my phone, but I think it's better to let you see Nicole in person in a few days. Mary quickly waved her hand. That won't do. Show me the pictures first. Let me have a look. All right, all right, right away. Gail took out her phone and opened the photo album. Apart from some design sketches, her phone is filled with photos of the two children. She had documented every moment. From when Joshua and Nicole were born, she had captured photos of every milestone and every mundane moment. Mom, this is Nicole when she was only a year old. Look, she was so chubby and her eyes were so big. This is her playing the piano. Chapter 1466 This is her on her first day in kindergarten for the first time, carrying a backpack dressed in her school uniform. Mary watched with delight, her eyes filled with affection. Nicole is really beautiful. She takes after you. That was her granddaughter. Previously, Mary had no idea when she would become a grandmother and would not even dare to dream about it. Now, all of a sudden, she had a five-year-old granddaughter. She was a sight to behold, cute, well-behaved, and bright as a button. However, as Mary continued looking at the photos, she noticed something was amiss. She pointed to one of the photos. Wait a minute, Gail. Who is this little boy next to Nicole? Why is he in so many of Nicole's photos? And why do you have so many individual pictures of him? Mom, he's your grandson. Mary was dumbfounded. Her finger frozen on the phone screen. Having a granddaughter was already a pleasant surprise, but she had a grandson too. It was a joyous occasion that one would not even dare to dream about. Gail, are you saying I now not only have a daughter and a son-in-law, but also a granddaughter and a grandson? Gail nodded. Yes. They say grandparents are particularly doting, so when the time comes, you'll surely spoil the two kids. Mary still had not fully processed it. All along, she had only heard about the Wood family's heiress, but she had never heard that there was also an heir. Gail had two children? Then why did she only know about Nicole and not the other child? Gail understood what was going on in her head. Mom, your grandson is named Joshua. Nicole and Joshua are twins, born a few minutes earlier. However, his identity has never been made public. Not even Sean knows he has another son. Mary was even more astonished. Sean doesn't know? Gail, what's going on here? I left Sea City for four years, and everyone thought I was dead until I reappeared with Nicole. At that time, Nicole had leukemia, and only Sean's bone marrow was a match. I had to bring her to him because he could save her. But I left an exit plan for myself. I didn't bring Joshua back to the Wood family. My relationship with Sean was strained, and our marriage was on the verge of falling apart. I didn't want him to know that I had given birth to a pair of twins. Afraid that both children would eventually belong to him. So, I kept Joshua's identity hidden. Soon, I'm going to arrange for Joshua to return to Temperley Hall to be with me. After hearing it, Mary sighed. I understand. We're both women, both mothers, and we can't bear to be apart from our children. Mom, it's good that you understand... Mary looked at her lovingly. I've said it before, Sean is not like Matthew. Sean is trustworthy. He won't do anything extreme to harm you or try to take the two children away from you. Gail hung her head, feeling a bit embarrassed. 
Back then, I had too many concerns. I was afraid that I couldn't compete with Sean for the custody of Nicole and Joshua. So I came up with a plan to keep Joshua's identity hidden. Mary smiled. Are you still worried now? Gail shook her head. Not anymore. Sean's actions and decisions had dispelled all her concerns. What she needed to do now was to stop hiding Joshua and to acknowledge Joshua as her son publicly. Chapter 1467 In the past, she had been very careful not to let the secret slip. However, Gail paid no heed to what others thought. Her main concern was how Sean would react. After all, this man had a quick temper. Talk to Sean about it. He'll understand. Considering all that you've been through together, he won't be quick to blame you. Mary suggested. He won't blame me, but... Indeed, he would likely to take advantage of the situation to make various unreasonable demands for compensation. Gail could already envision the challenging life awaiting her. However, there was no point in dwelling on it at the moment. This weekend, I'll bring Nicole over. Joshua will come along as well. This way, you can meet your grandchildren, and they can finally see their grandmother, Gail said, looking at Mary. Mary could not stop smiling. That sounds perfect. We still have some time. I'll buy them some gifts. No need for that, Mom. I insist. How could I let the two children visit their grandmother and return empty-handed? Mary replied. Gail acquiesced to her wishes. Moreover, considering how charming Joshua and Nicole were, she could only imagine how delighted they would make Mary. Mary continued. I need to pick out something special for them since we have a boy and a girl. You are really quite blessed, Gail, not to mention having twins. It's quite a sudden promotion to grandmother, and I'm still getting used to it. I'm not sure how to handle two kids, and I'm not well versed in parenting. I used to believe my parenting methods were highly successful until Natalie proved me wrong. <sighs> I'm growing older. My role will be to pamper the children. I will be content being a doting grandmother who fulfills their every wish, Mary remarked. Gail nodded in agreement. All right. Mary then hesitated before speaking further. Gail encouraged her. Tell me, Mom. I overheard you mentioning Natalie earlier. Mary reclined slightly on her hospital bed and let out a long sigh. Recently, I keep having dreams about Natalie. In some dreams, she stands before me, covered in blood with a pale face. In others, she kneels before me, sobbing. And then there were times when she's a child again, boasting about getting perfect scores. Mary shared her face, filled with concern. I never expected her life would take a turn for the worse, but I do feel a sense of responsibility. I can't simply put her aside. During this period, I haven't seen her and I have no idea how she is doing. I'm constantly worried. Does she believe I've abandoned her? In reality, Mary still hoped that Natalie could turn her life around and start anew. However, she did not mention it as she did not want to burden Gail. After all, Natalie's transgressions were truly unforgivable. Moreover, Mary had always refrained from urging others to be forgiving or prioritize family bonds, believing that without first-hand experience of another's pain, one should not demand forgiveness from others. Mary's principles were unwaveringly upright. Chapter 1468 Gail began Mom, you wanted to see Natalie but felt awkward bringing it up with me, alright? Yes. However, Mary quickly clarified. I'm not looking for forgiveness. 
I simply want to see Natalie and have a chat with her. I raised her myself, and in my heart, I still can't let go of her. I understand. Don't worry, Mom. I'm not jealous. Gail smiled. Mary finally felt at ease. As long as you understand. Let me arrange it. I'll have her come over right now. After all, they were bound to meet sooner or later. So why not now? Plus, Gail was already present. Natalie's fate had been sealed and would not change. She would pay for her mistakes for the rest of her life. Gail made the call, and the person on the other end immediately spoke respectfully upon hearing her voice. Ma'am, are you saying you'd like to see Natalie? Yes, please. Bring her over. I'll send you the location. Of course. Please wait. The bodyguard hung up with Gail and promptly dialed Sean's number. Mr. Wood, speak. Ma'am wishes to see Natalie. She's asked us to bring Natalie to the VIP ward in the hospital. What are your instructions? The bodyguard reported. Sean raised an eyebrow slightly. She said that herself. Yes, I just received a call from Ma'am. It was her directly. Follow her instructions. Understood, Mr. Wood. Sean added, Assign additional personnel to keep a close watch on Natalie. Ensure nothing unexpected happens. The bodyguard replied, Natalie has been quite calm this past few days. Not causing any trouble, she's easily manageable. The more composed she appears, the more you must be cautious. There is more than meets the eye. Yes, Mr. Wood. With Sean's approval, the bodyguard set things in motion. He knocked on the door. Hello, Natalie. It's time to leave. We're taking you for some fresh air. Natalie asked calmly. Where are we going? Mrs. Wood wishes to see you. She inquired further. Where is she? At the hospital ward. Natalie's eyes briefly lit up then quickly returned to a calm expression. She complied, allowing the bodyguard to place ankle restraints on her without struggling or resisting. That meant she would either meet Matthew or Mary. Matthew did not have the dignity for this, so it was most likely that Mary wanted to see her. Did her plea for mercy have any effect? Natalie's mind raised. When she pushed open the door to the hospital room and saw Mary, Followed by Gail standing beside her, Natalie smiled. Chapter 1469 However, she quickly composed herself, jogged over to the ward and called out, Mom! However, because she was wearing ankle restraints, she could not walk very fast. Just after running a few steps, she stumbled and fell to the ground, looking quite disheveled. Mary was taken aback. Natalie, it's all right, it's all right. Natalie immediately got up. Mom, don't worry about me. When she addressed her as mom, tears welled up in Mary's eyes. Natalie was still willing to call her mom. On the other side, Gail's alarms went off. Something was off. Natalie was acting very unusually. The last few times they had met, it was clear that she despised Mary that she resented her. She kept saying that Mary had abandoned her, that she had not treated her like a daughter. That was nothing like the obedient appearance she was showing now. However, Gail did not say anything either. She would see how Natalie intended to play this out. Like Heather, she was also a great actress. Natalie laboriously made her way to the side of the sickbed directly knelt down and looked at Mary with tearful eyes. Mom, I'm sorry for making you worry and for disappointing you. It's my fault. I've let you down after all these years of raising me. You're in the hospital now because of me. I've been a terrible daughter. No, a terrible adopted daughter. Mom, don't you worry about me anymore. I'm not worth it. I just hope you live a healthy long life. Forget about me. 
the unfilial daughter, the sinner who ruined the Yuharn family. Natalie looked like she wanted to cry, but was holding back, appearing pitiful and utterly wretched. By the end of her speech, she held Mary's hand, lowered her head onto the edge of the sick bed, and cried softly. Mary, who was naturally kind-hearted, could not resist Natalie's tears, especially when she saw the wounds on her body, the numerous scars on her arms, and the heavy shackles on her feet. Mary immediately lost her composure and began crying herself. Natalie, you can get up. You finally realize your mistakes and acknowledge how wrong you've been. That's good. It's good. Recognizing your faults and making amends, you're still my good child, she said. Mom, do you still acknowledge me as your child? I raised you with my own hands. How could I not acknowledge you? It's just that you... Ah, you've been so foolish. Natalie looked up with a teary face. Yes, you always taught me to be a kind person, not to harm others, to help others. But good relationships expand my network, never to be jealous or envious. But I didn't listen to a word you said. And I've made so many mistakes. Mom, I'm sorry. I don't deserve to be your daughter. You didn't mention wanting to see me, and I didn't dare to request it either. Not only have I not made you proud, but I've become your shame. Following that, she glanced at Gail. Now, Mom, you have your biological daughter by your side. She's married well. She's excellent. And she has power and authority. I can finally rest easy. As long as you're well, I can be happy for you. Mary could not stop wiping her tears. As for Gail, she remained impassive. That would work only on Mary, who was constantly reminiscing about Natalie. It would not work on Gail. At the very least, the words she spoke provided a small measure of comfort to Mary. They were much better than the hurtful things she had said before, like, She no longer considers me her daughter. She probably tried to get close to the Wood family, and she doesn't care about my life or death. Mary took a deep breath and said, Natalie, Natalie, I hope you have a good life too, but the things you've done... I've brought this upon myself, Mom. I am content that you would still meet me and let me call you mom. Chapter 1417 I've raised you, always treated you as my own daughter. You've also met Heather. Natalie quickly interrupted her. No, no, I don't acknowledge her as my mother. I only acknowledge you. You're the one who raised me, taught me to read and write, and guided me through life. You're my mother. She's not. She doesn't deserve it. That was truly Natalie's heartfelt sentiment. Even if she were to die, she would not acknowledge a home wrecker as her mother. She would rather be the adopted daughter of the Yarn family, which sounded better and carried more prestige. Upon hearing Natalie's words, Mary was touched and saddened once more. Natalie, do you still acknowledge me? After all that's happened, do you still consider me your mother? Mom, do you still acknowledge me? Or have you become fonder of Gail and consider me an outsider? To be honest, Natalie, you and Gail are both my daughters. I haven't differentiated between my biological and adopted daughters. However, you've committed so many wrongs, and I... Mary sighed repeatedly, wearing a helpless expression on her face. I know, I admit, I realize my mistakes, Mom. If you don't believe me, you can ask Gail, Natalie said. Natalie seemed particularly sensible, giving the appearance of having repented. Yes, Gail already told me, but the consequences of your actions are too severe, Natalie. I wouldn't even know how to plead on your behalf, Mary said. 
hearing Mary finally mention pleading for mercy, Natalie instantly felt reassured that was what she has been waiting for. Natalie tightened her grip on Mary's hand, saying, No, I don't need you to plead for me, Mom. I've had no chance to repay your kindness for raising me. How can I make things difficult for you and ask you to go and speak on my behalf before Gail? Especially now she's already had falling with Dad. I can't afford to let you two have a falling out as well. I'm thinking of you, Mom. Her words were full of contradictions, saying she did not want Mary to plead for her, but in reality, Natalie was engaging in moral blackmail. Mary was a soft-hearted and kind person, and the more Natalie spoke like this, the more guilty she felt. She had been waiting for Mary to plead on her behalf. Gail stood by quietly all this while, not saying a word. She just observed Natalie waiting to see what kind of tricks she would play. Natalie, everything is destined, and I can't change it. I can't insist on something that's impossible. Your repentance is all I need. I am glad you won't blame me for pleading on your behalf. Natalie lowered her head, her expression both pitiful and helpless. How could I ever blame you? Hearing this, Gil could not help but mutter quietly. She is just another scheming woman. Natalie was pretending to be a pitiful, innocent woman. She claimed not to want Mary to plead for her, but actually wanted her too. In the current situation, neither Matthew nor Heather had any influence, and even Aram could not help her. Natalie had pinned her hopes on Mary. She was trying to stir Mary's compassion. Unfortunately, 